Hello, I am Yagnik, and today I'll be demonstrating how to run a transient dynamic mesh simulation using 60 web solver in Ansys Fluent. So for running the simulation today, I'll be using this uh, 2D domain for demonstrating the setup. So this particular uh, geometry is having a uh, the left-hand side boundary is set as inlet. The right-hand side boundary is set as outlet. And the top and the bottom boundaries are set as symmetries. The cylinder, this 2D circular cylinder, is set up as a wall boundary condition. And the mesh that I used is a non-uniform mesh but it's structured so it's a structured non-uniform mesh um yeah so let's move on to the setup so before i start the uh, start demonstrating about the setup um since so for setting up dynamic mesh we have either of the two choices so one can be by using a udf file it's a user defined function file which was generally uh, mandatory to be used for previous ANSYS versions. So it's a C uh, file where we kind of determine the uh, dynamic mesh data. Like for example, in my case, I needed to give information like the cylinder mass or the velocity of the cylinder or the displacement of the cylinder and the damping coefficients and frequency. But in a modern ANSYS releases in 2023, let's say the one that I'm using, you do not necessarily need the UDF file. You can also just use the ANSYS options to, you can bypass the step for loading the UDF, but I'm going to show both the ways. So for loading the UDF, you need to run the, or open up the Fluent from a compiler. So ANSYS uses VS Code as its own compiler. So we need to, so for that, you need to install VS Code as uh, the compiler environment. So I have that. So once you have the VS Code set up in your system, open up the command prompt for VS Code. So here you can see it's command prompt for VS 2022 and navigate to the folder where you have the Fluent application and run the Fluent from there. So you can open the particular setup file using Fluent uh, from the VS Code terminal window. So once we do that, so this particular Fluent is open through that terminal window in VS Code. And once we do that, now let's go through the steps for setting up the simulation. So first is the general setup. So in the general setup, what we need to do is we need to set up the solver type. Solver type is pressure-based. The time needs to be set as transient because we are trying to run a transient simulation. And 2D space as planar, velocity formulation absolute. Once we do that, let's move on to the models. So in models, we will just uh, set the viscous type as uh, laminar because we just want to use the continuity and the X and the Y momentum equations. We don't want a complex uh, simulation to be running. We, uh, that's why we set it as laminar for this case, and we will keep everything else off. For materials, uh, the particular simulation that I'm trying to run will be using fluid, uh, water as the fluid medium. So fluid has its own database and we can select a uh, water liquid from it and we can copy and create uh, the material. So the density and the viscosity of water liquid is basically the water at 20 degrees Celsius. Once we have that, you can close it. And the next thing that we need to do is set up the cell zone condition. So in cell zone condition, select this fluid and change the material to water liquid. And then apply and close. <clears throat> next, we are going to move to the boundary conditions. 
So in boundary conditions, um, the cylinder wall is basically the 2D circular cylinder over here. And we have set the type as wall. We're going to edit. So in wall type, use the option stationary wall and no slip condition for, for this particular case. Close it, we set up the inlet. So for this particular uh, simulation, I'm going to try to run a simulation for Reynolds number of 106. So based on the density viscosity of the fluid and my cylinder diameter, so we will have a velocity magnitude of 0 0.066568. I have calculated it beforehand, so I'm just going to write it. So this is going to run a Reynolds number of 106. Close and the interior surface body and surface body is basically the interior uh, fluid, which is just, uh, so it will be just set up as interior. And the top and the bottom boundaries are set up as symmetry and the right-hand side is outlet. So outlet, I have set it up as pressure outlet with gauge pressure of zero, which means that the outlet is open to the atmosphere. And that's what we want to keep it as. Apply and then close. So, um, so once the boundary condition is set up, the next thing that we need to do is we need to uh, go to the dynamic mesh. But before we start the dynamic mesh, we need to compile the UDF file. So in general, I have a UDF file ready so that I will be using for this case. So let me show you that one. So this is an example uh, UDF file. So what it does is it's, it's a C script. So it's written in C format, .c. Um, so it has all the properties, SDOF properties for the cylinder that I'm going to simulate. It has the center of gravity position, the velocity, lift force, mass, frequency, omega, which is two times pi times the frequency, Fn, the damping coefficient, system stiffness, and system damping. Also, if you notice, so we need to set up the so what we want from our particular <clears throat> VIV, a uh, vortex induced vibration simulation is that, so there is this domain and we have a cylinder, which we want to vibrate only in the Y direction. So every other motion or the degrees of freedom will be limited. So there are total six degrees of freedom, translation in X, Y, and Z and rotation about X, Y, and Z. But since we just need the translation in the Y direction, we can switch off the other five degrees of freedoms. For that, what we need to do is we'll just use the properties. So properties of SDOF zero trans X. So this means SDOF properties, zero translation in X direction. So what that means is the cylinder will not, and if we put it as true, so that means that the cylinder won't be moving in the, or will have zero translation in X. Similarly for zero translation in Z, zero rotation, Z, X, Y, and Z. We'll all put them as true. So we limited the cylinder movement only in Y direction, which we did not mention here is the zero trans Y. So we don't need to mention that it will automatically assume that the cylinder is moving only in the Y direction. So once we do all that, we can take the CG value, which is the cylinder displacement, uh, or basically the center of gravity uh, movement of the cylinder and the velocity of the center of gravity. And if you want, you can write the values in a file and output it to you. So for, for that, I have a file named result.txt, which is going to take the data for time and that particular time, the cylinder displacement and the velocity of the moving cylinder. So that's how pretty much the C uh, UDF file will look like. So once you have the UDF file ready for you, the next thing that you need is to load the UDF file in the Influent. 
So <clears throat> for that, uh, what we need to do is we need to go to parameters and customization and open up, right click on the user defined function. So let's go to compile. And in compile, we need to add the source file. Now remember the source file should be in the same folder as your Fluence setup and data files. So if you're using the particular setup or data file, it should be saved in the same folder as your UDF file. And before that, I'm going to check that the library that I'm going to use libudf is not already present in my folder. So if you see the libudf folder is already present from the previous simulation that I ran. So I'm going to just delete this. So make sure uh, it, it's the folder is not there and your current simulation data is being used. So once we do that, we need to add the source file. So we go there. So this is the source file, the UDF file that I just showed you. Click OK, and then we need to build it. It's going to ask you that make sure that the UDF source file are in the same directory as your case and data file at the library. libudf directory doesn't exist uh, as it is going to make a new libudf file a folder for us. So do you want to proceed? Okay. And it's going to take some time. There we go. And we, as you can see, it shows creating dot uh, user dot udf and it's using com compiler and linker as Microsoft Visual C++. So since we're using visual code, that's the compiler for us. And it's generating, it generated a UDF. Uh, it, it basically compiles the UDF file and puts it in the libudf directory. Once we compile it, we just need to load it. So once we load it, we can see that opening library and then this stage, stage is basically the name of the UDF file that I kept. So, so right now we have loaded our UDF file in ANSYS. So if we run ANSYS, uh, the, the simulation will basically use the UDF file that we have compiled for this particular case. So once this is done, <clears throat> we'll now go to the dynamic mesh um, option and we'll just click it. So once that is done, let's go to mesh methods. In mesh methods, select checkbox, the smoothing and remeshing. Let's check the settings. In settings, we will select the spring lapless or boundary layer. And in the remeshing, for 2D case, local cell is fine. Uh, for the parameters, uh, it's highly suggested use the default values. Do not put any values of your own unless you know what are the right parameters. Just use the default for Fluent and it will be fine. It will, Fluent will automatically suggest you the values for your particular simulation case. And just click OK. Once you do that, select the 6DOF uh, option since we want the 6DOF solver to run. And once we do that, what you can do is you can create this right motion history. So the right motion history is basically so. Anyway, we are using the UDF file. We were opening, uh, we were outputting the values of the cylinder displacement and cylinder velocity uh, velocity values. But if you want to separately write the motion history through Fluent, you can just check the box, uh, click, uh, take this, uh, check this box for write motion history, and Fluent will write the motion history of the cylinder, which is have going through the 60OF. Uh, which is having the 60 DOF motion, or in this case, just one DOF motion, uh, the, the motion history will be written, uh, written down for you. So let's click OK. <clears throat> Once we click OK, uh, next thing we need to do is go to the dynamic mesh zones, and we need to create slash edit. And over here, select the zone type. So the zone type would be cylinder wall because we want the cylinder wall to be undergoing the 60 of motion and select type rigid body. And in the 60 of UDF slash properties, you can see that it's already showing us the lib UDF or the UDF file basically that we have compiled and uploaded, uh, loaded, uh, loaded in the ANSYS fluent. So 
do not need to change anything. Just select this and then just create. So right now we do have the, we, our dynamic mesh is set up and it will, uh, the simulation will run according to the UDF file. So the cylinder will move and will have the properties, what we have mentioned in the UDF. So once we do that, uh, we're not going to change the methods or controls. We're just going to keep the default values that we that is given by Fluent for this particular case. What we can do is we can set up uh, <clears throat> the uh, drag coefficient and lift coefficient data of the cylinder wall. So for that, let's go to flow force report drag. And I'm just going to select, I uh, just keep the default name, whatever it is that you can change the name and write uh, zone type as cylinder wall, report output type drag coefficient. So it will uh, output the drag coefficient values for you and create a report file. If you want a plot to be created by ANSYS, then you can check this report plot option as well, but I'm not going to do that and just click okay. Similarly, we'll do for the force report and lift coefficient. So lift coefficient, report def one, then zone as the cylinder wall because we need the lift coefficient for the cylinder wall. Uncheck the report plot, just keep the report file and click okay. And then I'm going to close it and let's move on to the monitors residuals. So for ANSYS Fluent, uh, the by default residual values are 10 to the power negative three, which is very high. You need to keep it at least around 10 to the power negative six. So that's what I'm going to do. So change the residual values to 10 to the power negative six and click okay. Once everything is done, most of the setup is ready. Let's go to initialization. I'm going to, you can either do hybrid or standard initialization. I'm going to do standard. So in standard, I'm going to compute from inlet. <clears throat> in inlet, uh, initial, uh, so from the inlet, uh, you can see that the X velocity is given as the velocity that we just um, uh, calculated uh, for the particular Reynolds number, 106. And the Y velocities of the order of 10 to the power negative 34 which is almost zero. So I'm just going to write zero instead of that big value. And I'm going to initialize. So the initialization is done. So once the initialization is done, let's move on to the next. So um, if you want to keep the data for every time step or every 10 or 100 time steps, so you can go to this auto save option and select like save data files every 10 or 100 or one based on your requirement. And then you can create a video of the simulation that you ran. So that's another feature, but for now I'm going to keep it zero because I do not need to create any video right now. So, so once that is set up, let's move on to the one calculation. And in the run calculation, uh, we can keep the time advancement type as fixed, but the problem with fixed time step is you need to be very sure about the time step size of the simulation that you're going to run. Because if the time step size is bigger, many times what happens is the mesh kind of distorts because the cylinder will be moving, the mesh distorts uh very like very much which might cause negative volume so negative negative volume is basically when uh let's say this mesh is there this point and this point of a mesh is there so this reverses this point goes there due to the distortion of the meshes which is uh undesirable and may cause the simulation to crash so in order to avoid that, what we can do is we can uh, select a mesh method of, uh, or we can check uh, check this type as adaptive. So once the adaptive uh, time advancement is selected, uh, the method will keep it as CFL. So where we do need to select the current number, 
Uh, so the current number you should check based on, like it shouldn't be too low or too high. So make sure that the current number is around one to 10. So based on uh, the conservativeness of your simulation. So I'm going to keep the current number as five for my case. And I'm going to have the number of time steps as thousand. And then I'm just going to, uh, and there's another parameter just maximum iterations per time step. You can make it, let's say 30, 20 to 30 based on the rate at which the, the residual is decreasing for you. Um, but uh, generally 20 to 30 is a good value. And just select calculate. So your simulation will run. And based on the simulation, I, the results.txt file and your uh, dynamic mesh option, uh, dynamic mesh solver will be running. I'm going to stop this for now because we don't need to run it for so long. So this is uh, the way you um, select the, uh, or set up the dynamic mesh using a UDF file. Let's say we do need the, uh, we do not want to use the UDF file in order to run the dynamic mesh. So for that, we do not need VS code to run or compile our UDF file. We can directly go to the dynamic mesh, select the 60F solver, go to settings. And what we can do is we can create slash edit, give a name, let's say cylinder, because I'll be running cylinder to scale, keep a mass of the cylinder. For my case, it was 035.03575 kg select one degree of translation and since we want the cylinder to be moving in y direction it'll be y uh equal to one so that means uh, it, it will be moving in the y direction we can set up a spring constant and then we can spring constant or if there is any preload spring tension we can uh, mention those values and just click create. So you can just simply create the 6DOF property instead of writing a UDF file for you and just click okay. Then once you do that, go to dynamic mesh zones, keep the same like zone wall, uh, whatever the zone is you want to simulate for dynamic mesh for us, it will be cylinder wall. And instead of this lib UDF, Right now you can see this cylinder option will be there. Cylinder is the new 6DF property that we have created using just ANSYS. So in this way, you do not need the UDF file to run the 6DOF solver. You can just create the UDF properties or, or 6DOF properties uh, using just the ANSYS Fluent options and just say create and it will create. Uh, so this particular uh, dynamic mesh zone will now be using the cylinder properties. And you will be uh, basically be running the dynamic mesh zone. So this is a much more simpler process than the UDF file. And that's that. Okay, um, I'm going to show you uh, the video of that I have created for running the dynamic meshes. So this is the um, video that I have created or the animation that I've created out of my simulation that I ran. So as you can see, this the cylinder is moving in the upward and downward direction, only the Y axis. So this is uh, the velocity contour of the cylinder. So yeah, that's how you can set up the 60F solver. And that's all for now. Thank you.